Between 1963 to 1976, a war was fought in the Dafa province in Oman. It became known as the Dafa Rebellion. In 1963, Oman was ruled by Sultan Sad bin Tamer. He was a reactionary and an isolationist, but he was also backed by the British government. The British government had a lot of administrative control over the Sultanate, with all but one of the government's ministers being British. But their biggest interest was the country's oil reserves. Due to the backward thinking of the old Sultan, he was not allowing Oman to modernise. So in July 1970, in a near bloodless palace coup, the old uh, Sultan was removed from power and was replaced by his son, Qaboos bin Saad. It was during this coup that the old Sultan shot himself in the foot. The new Sultan had been trained at Sandhurst Military Academy, followed by a short stint in the British Army. He immediately started modernising the country, this including increasing the size of the military, including the purchase of 12 Strike Master jets. The Strike Master was developed in the 1950s in Britain. It was used as a training and light attack aircraft that flew until the 1990s. As people from the Dofar region gained employment outside the country, they realised how backward the Sultanate was. One particular person was Musalam bin Nafal, an elder of one of the largest tribes in the Dofar region. He was part of the Sultan's inner circle and was convinced that Dofar would stay an undeveloped backwater. By 1962-63, he had gained financial and logistical support from Saudi Arabia, which allowed him to found the Dofar Liberation Front. The group then commenced hit-and-run attacks against the Sultan's armed forces. In 1967, the British pulled out of Aden, which became the capital of the People's Democratic Republic of Yemen. The new country was an Arab nationalist and pro-Marxist, with loads of support coming from communist China and the now-defunct Soviet Union. Yemen allowed the uh, Dofar Liberation Front to set up training camps in their country. Dofar Liberation Front recruits received arms and training from the Soviets, the Chinese and the Egyptians. By 1968, the DLF controlled most mountain regions, literally cutting off the remainder of the province from the rest of Oman. But all this communist backing meant the DLF became more Marxist in its leanings. So by 1970, not only had the name changed, but the original leadership of the DLF, including Musalam bin Nafal, had left and allied themselves to the new Sultan, Qobos bin Saad. Literally within hours of the coup that installed the new Sultan, an amnesty was offered to those that opposed the uh, former Sultan on the condition they surrender their arms and swore allegiance to the new Sultan. The second major thing that happened within hours was the arrival of members from the British 22nd Special Air Service Regiment, or the SAS. The SAS were given the task of defeating the communist-backed rebels while at the same time winning over the mountain people. With the arrival of the SAS, the rearming and reorganisation of the uh, Sultan's armoured forces and the defection of a few hundred former rebels, the fight was taken to the enemy. They were so successful that the rebels decided they must do a big operation to show they were still in business. In the coastal town of Murbat, there was a detachment of nine SAS troopers and a small number of local and Pakistani troops. The SAS weren't in Oman on official combat duties. They were officially designated the British Army Training Team, or BATT. The SAS detachment in Murbat were commanded by a Captain Mike Keeley, who didn't have the combat experience as the other troopers, but ended up receiving the Distinguished Service Order for his actions in Murbat that day. He survived the Dofar Rebellion, but died of hypothermia on the Brecon Beacons in 1979. The rebels put together a force of between two to three hundred and launched an attack on Murbat on July 19, 1972, approximately 900 metres north of the barbed wire perimeter protecting the Bat House. A small group of paramilitaries were acting as lookouts, spotted the rebels as they were commencing their attack and opened fire, which woke up the SAS, who at first thought it was local troops returning from a patrol, but they quickly realised they were under a full-scale attack. The attackers were coming in from a north northeasterly direction out of the mountains under the cover of the early morning drizzle. Keeley ordered his men to open fire. Even the Pakistani troops obeyed his orders. As the British Army issued self-loading rifles were not that effective until the enemy got a lot closer, a Fijian SAS member, a Sergeant Talalasi Labalaba, raced to the only artillery piece in Murbat. 
a World War II vintage 25 pounder gun which he single handedly operated repeatedly until he was wounded. Then another Fiji and SAS member, Trooper Sikanaya Pekavesi, raced under fire to the artillery piece. He rallied the small number of Omani troops who finally joined the battle, while the two continued firing the 25-pounder at point-blank range. When Captain Keeley could not contact the artillery pit, he and another SAS member, Trooper Tobin, made their way under fire to the pit and realised that both the Fijians were wounded but were still in the fight. Sergeant Labba Labba was still firing the 25-pounder while Trooper Takavesi was badly wounded in the back but was firing on the ramparts with his personal weapon. It was the defence of this gun pit that the SA has had their two casualties killed in action. Trooper Tobin had been shot in the head while Sergeant Labba Labba was killed while still firing the 25-pounder. The rebels regrouped and launched another mass assault focusing on the gun pit area. Captain Keeley called on the other SAS members to bring more tar and machine gun fire on top of the attackers. It was shortly after this that the first airstrikes by the strike masters of the Omani Air Force arrived. They commenced their attacks against the rebels who started withdrawing. One of the strike masters received so many enemy hits that it had to withdraw and return to base. At a little after 9am another round of airstrikes arrived, this time to attack the rebel mortar and 75mm recoilers rifles in the rear. Ground reinforcements had started arriving too. There was 23 members of G Squadron of 22 SAS that had only arrived in the country the day before. They were flown in by helicopter, then immediately joined the battle. By 12.30, the overall battle for Mubat was over. The defence was a success. Two members of the SAS were killed, two others seriously wounded. But 38 rebel bodies were recovered, and it was expected more died from their wounds afterwards. The last SAS members left Oman in 1976. With the exception of a few isolated incidents, the Dofar rebels had been defeated. Oman became a modern Arab state with high living standards, while the nearby Marxist Arab state of Yemen is poverty stricken and is currently involved in another war. Anyway, thanks for watching. Please check out my other videos, and until next time.